right, good day to you. My name is Fred Oakman, and as always with me today is Mr. Jake Peters. We are PS This Is Awesome, a PlayStation podcast, and this is episode 215. We're a show, we're a show our feelings about the current state of PlayStation, but before we get on with the show, I want to invite you all to subscribe to our channel on YouTube, youtube.com slash PS This Is Awesome. Go visit us on Twitter at PS This Is Awesome, and if you want to make fun of a trophy list on the PSN, you can find me at anchorless underscore 81 and Mr. Jake Peters at jakesaw01. As always, you can write us at PS This Is Awesome at gmail.com. And most importantly, don't forget to share the show with your friends. Make sure to leave comments. Rate our podcast as you see fit. And as a reminder, we're a video podcast. So you can watch this show if you prefer on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe to that. And for new and or longtime listeners, we now have a Patreon. You can support the show at a $1 level. It's called the One and Only $1 Club. Head over to www.patreon.com slash PS This Is Awesome and you can become a $1 patron and get a free die cut vinyl sticker and a shout out on our show. With that out of the way, Jake, before we get on with the show, I want to firstly discuss a comment that was left on our YouTube channel on episode 214. And it's the only comment we got on episode 214. And I'll read it specifically and then we can discuss briefly before we move on to the rest of the show and maybe get some other input from the audience but the comment simply stated uh, and i quote what a long and needy intro dot 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 dropped end quote so i guess i don't know we've always had this format right where like we talk now, when I was writing you about this, let me backpedal a little bit. I sent this to you, and I said, man, I guess someone wasn't happy with our intro. And I said, needy is kind of a weird word to use. And then I'm like, well, we don't have any advertising on our show except for us. Like, we don't have advertising elsewhere. So the only way for us to promote our show is on our show. So if you happen on the podcast, I want people to say, okay, this is how I can write them. And every episode should have that because we don't know what jumping on point somebody may have for the show. Could it be shortened? Could it be abbreviated, the introduction? Possibly. But I think consistency is important. However, you mentioned that you think maybe we bitch too much at the beginning of the show and complain too I much. Would, I was just saying that I wonder, I wondered, my thought immediately went to maybe the commenter was less upset about like the, the rigmarole at the beginning and maybe a little bit more irritated by the fact that usually we start like the first five to 10 minutes of our show. Yeah. Just kind of talking about bitching about life right. essentially. And we um, do. Sure. And, and, and yeah, and, and I can understand that I, I, you and I talked back and forth about this a bit and I told you that I, I could understand, like, especially if you're having a bad day and you're trying to escape or whatever, you know, maybe you don't want, to listen to somebody else bitch about life. You just want to listen to a, a podcast about video games. And I'm not suggesting that we change anything yeah. because we've done this, we've done it this way forever. But uh, yeah, it's just, it was just kind of an interesting thing. And um, you know, I appreciate the person writing in sure. and commenting. I'd actually, honestly, I'd like a little bit more context. Yeah, me too. Maybe some specifically like what, what was uh, what they didn't really care for. Um, if it was more about, our you know life stories or if it was more if it was more about like the the promotion at the beginning of the show promotion at the beginning right yeah i don't know i mean maybe we just need to be like hey you're already here you know where to fucking find us here's the show and like and i get that um but uh, I don't know. It, it's kind of an interesting thing for sure. Well, the way that people find our show, it's going to be one of two ways, right? You're not going to stumble on the YouTube and the podcast at the same time, right? So if we're catching you on YouTube, we're telling you that we're a podcast also. And if you're catching us on a podcast, we're telling you we're on YouTube also. That's why we got to do the whole, uh, you know, cover all of our bases. So that's why it's done that way. And then, you know, it we would be remiss if we didn't talk about our Patreon because it is literally the only way we can generate any kind of revenue for the show at this point because we don't have paid advertising. So if, if listeners want to promote us. Now, I did make the comment last show about how we would take all your money. Maybe they didn't like that. But, I mean, if you're with us for long enough, you know who we are as people at this point. You understand our characters and our per- – not our character, but our personalities, right? You, you probably have learned to grow with us and feel like you might know us a little bit. And uh, obviously, I'm not like, give me your fucking money. 
Uh, that's not who we are, but I, it was kind of a joke. You know, we'll take all, yeah, if you want to fucking give it to us, we'll take it. You know, it's one of those. Yeah, we absolutely will. Um, we'd appreciate it too, obviously. We'd be grateful for it. But maybe that was the comment that threw the person off. I don't know. But I, I guess I'm putting it out there, and Jake, we're putting it out there to the listeners. If you would like us to jump straight to video games instead of having our our kind of uh, warm-up icebreaker conversations, I, we could by all means do that. I mean, it would shorten the show at least by 10 minutes, I would imagine. But uh, I think people like the recaps on how our lives are going. And we bring up not just personal stuff. Like, we talk about things that I think other people experience in life. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like other people experience this kind of thing. And, uh, you know, it's relatable, I think. So, I don't know. Yeah, speaking of life experiences people can relate to, I went to see Alice Cooper in concert last oh, night, God, which was fucking awesome, yeah, by I've the way. Seen him. I'm a huge Alice Cooper fan. And... Uh, things that people can relate to. I'm not a very tall guy. I'm like five seven on the best day, mm-hmm. and I under I don't, I'm not one of those people that say like if you're tall you shouldn't be able to be close to the stage because people behind you can't see. I don't. You can't. Te- you can't help how tall you are. If you have the opportunity to let someone shorter stand in front of you and you want to do that, great. That's on you. But I'm not saying you have to. The one thing that pisses me off is people that show up to concerts and they have big fucking afros and they don't put a goddamn hat on. Like, just, you can help your hair, bro. Just put a fucking hat on. You're blocking literally like three people behind you because they can't (laughs) see around your fucking hair. So, I mean, and it was like, it was just one of these things where I was at this show and, uh, you know, I'm such a huge Alice Cooper fan and he's so fucking old at this point that I'm like yeah. drinking it up as much as I can because I don't know how much longer this guy's going to be alive or at least how much longer he's going to be touring. Now, and I know he said in the past that he's going to tour until he dies, blah, blah, blah. But dude, I mean, he's fucking like 70, mid to mid 70s, like 75, you can't 76. tour with a colostomy bag. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, so like, <laughs> so like, um, but uh, yeah, it was it was just funny. I went to saw and saw them in Erie. I saw them in Erie last night, and it was a great it was a great show. I I really enjoyed myself. Mm-hmm. I, I went by myself, and and I don't know if you've ever gone to a concert by yourself. I really don't mind doing it. I love going. To, I, I'll be honest with you. I like going to concerts with other people, but I also love going by myself because then I can just kind of fucking let it all out. You know, I don't I don't have to worry about if someone else is having fun. Like if my wife is with me, like she would have gone if I'd asked her. But it's not like her bag, you know what I mean. So she wouldn't have been like really excited, I think the and then theatrics, I would have felt a little She would have liked the theatrics of it, probably. Oh yeah, no, she would have. She would have enjoyed herself, but it it would have been like a. I mean, you know how it is. I like, do know how you don't want to like yeah. overexert yourself, and then like have the person you're with right. be like, "What the fuck is this guy's deal?" And yeah. then like, because concerts could be a thing, you know, emotionally. Yeah. They so. Can. Um, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, that was just a, a Does fun Does he have the song Frankenstein? Is that Alice of, Cooper? Yeah. That's Alice Cooper, right? Frankenstein? What's that? Feed My Frankenstein? Yeah, yeah he opened so. with that song. Oh, it was really? fucking awesome. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I saw I saw him in Clearfield, in Clearfield Pennsylvania. Uh, he played the county fair there years ago. I went with my father. And, uh, wow. What a great show. It, he was great. Dude, he's... I, I kid you not, last night I think was the... I want to say it was the fifth time I've seen him in concert, fourth or fifth time I've seen him. And his show, dude, his band is so fucking good. Mm -hmm. Like you ever go see like a solo artist, but they have like a backing band with them. Usually it's kind of like, I guess, guess it's kind of like the flood with, with you or whatever, but like, kind of, yeah. Like you, you ever like, like see a, a group where you're like, okay, people are here to see the guy or whatever. But you just notice as a musician how fucking good the backing band is. Yeah. Dude, it's so, I mean, it was, it was just, I mean, and obviously, you know, he invented shock rock. So like all the spectacle, you know, the murder on stage and the, the giant like puppetry and like, you know, the, he, you know, the guillotine comes out on stage. I mean, he still does it all and he still sounds fun. Honestly, I don't know if this is controversial or not, but I honestly almost feel like his old voice 
complements his music so much better than like his young guy voice whenever he did it 50 years ago. Yeah, it's like what happened to Johnny Cash. Yeah, 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 very similar. So it's interesting. I don't know. We don't have to, uh, but anyway, that that was just something that I did yesterday that I thought was really fun. Well, on the topic of music, I'll just throw this out there real quick. Uh, Drummer for the Foo Fighters passed away, Taylor Hawkins. What a fucking shame. Dude, fucking, oh my God. Yeah. So I, yesterday, I was like, this is one of those things. Sad about that. Yeah. This is one of those things where it's like, can can nothing good happen without something bad happening at the same time? Because mm. I was such in such a good mood on my I was tired, but I was in such a good Coming mood on my drive show. home from that fucking concert. And then uh, our buddy texted us and was just like, R.I.P. fucking Taylor Hawkins. I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. The dude is 50 years old. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I don't want to speculate. I haven't looked into into it too much, but. You know, it sounds like it could be he's he's had drug issues in the past. So, you know, it could be related to that. It just it sucks. I mean, it is because I mean, like he's he's like I should say now using the past tense, but he was like one of the the best uh, working live rock drummers in our time. Like you watch I that guy drum, say, it's so awesome, he's so good, so positive so good. too. Just his attitude, and he's always fucking smiling and just having a blast. And um, what Dude, a I would shame. honestly say, I could honestly say that Taylor Hawkins probably was the face of drumming. Yeah, for rock and roll, dude. Like this generation, mm-hmm. like for the last twenty years, just in terms of like drummers who have a personality. Everybody knows, everybody loves, and they're also like Dude. a fucking banging drummer. The only other person I can think of is um, the uh, the guy from Blink-182. Um, yeah, Travis. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, Travis Barker. He's the only, other, the only other person that I can think of that's a drummer that's not like some fucking 70-year-old drummer that like, like Bert, defined drumming in the 60s Buddy or something. Yeah. Or whoever, right? So, so, yeah, it's not like John Bonham or something. It's like no, like they're like these guys here, they're are guys that are they're alive. Yeah. They're fucking doing it. Yeah, man. I mean, he wasn't even he wasn't even as old as my dad. Well, the thing and my dad's pretty young. The thing that's really so, wild about him is is I mean, like you know, and we'll get into video games in a second because we're gonna keep this short today. But not the podcast, but the intro. But the thing I just had to bring it up out of respect. But I, it's just like one of those situations, and because I'm just so fucking side railed by this you know i'm just so fucking sidelined it's such a great we, we recorded drums today in the studio and like that's all we were thinking about all day it's like holy fuck like that that guy but like he he visibly looked really healthy like he was it yeah. probably wasn't an ounce of body fat on that guy and then uh not to mention um he always seemed to have a super positive attitude and everything i've seen him in you know what i mean they did he was just was in that movie studio 666 with the fucking band which is like gonna have a terrible stain on it now because of this like in the movie spoiler but dave Grohl kills the whole band so there's a scene where he fucking kills taylor and it's just like this is fucking so bad now like you can't enjoy that is there a is there a um it was a joke didn't, when it, didn't they didn't they just release like a metal album or something too yeah so they they all the songs that they wrote for that movie it's kind of meta is Dave wrote like a ton of metal songs because the story of the movie is there was like a metal band that recorded there and lived there that bad things happened to them and it was like the album they recorded in the house but it was like this fucking ripper it's it's called like Ghost Witch or something it's so rad and so they did that they did the movie they're working on a new record they're on fucking tour so these kind of things if and again not to jump jump the gun or or assume things but i mean like when you have dependency issues and you have these things in in even when you're you know once an addict always an addict that whole thing i think they found they found some stuff in his blood the Colombian police came out and said you know they they did find shit and they're going to do a final toxicology thing but um i think ultimately it probably was a heart attack but probably drug induced but it's just dude. What suck? It sucks so bad because they just announced that that Studio Six 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 movie was coming to streaming platforms. Yeah, it's out like today. And I was so ex- it's like I was so today. excited to watch it. It's gonna be hard I was to so watch. So excited to watch it, and now I don't know if I can watch. At least not like I gotta wait a bit. You're not gonna be able now. to fucking it's laugh like, like they wanted you to. Yeah, I gotta wait until like the sting is gone, and then I can kind of enjoy it. Because you know that he probably had a blast making that movie. So like yeah. to me. 
the way the only way I was able to get myself to not sort of spiral on my drive home after that concert was just like the dude always had fun. He probably wants everybody else live to like the remember best life fondly, he have could've. fun, like, you know, live your best life, all that shit. So we're going to do that by talking about video games. Let's do it. Let's not perseverate on the shitty fucking news of 2022. All right. So let's get into it, Jake. Um, so games that we're playing. I, so I do have a new one to add to this list. And uh, I'm still cranking away in Horizon. In fact, I played it so much today that I, I've now crested 40 hours of gameplay in Horizon Forbidden Ooh. West. I'm over 40 hours. No closer to the fucking end. But I keep getting roped into the side missions despite what my goal is. I'm like level 30 now, I think. I think the level cap's 50, but the highest level yeah. the highest uh, level requirement in the game is a 35. So I've got to yeah. be fucking over-leveled at this point. And so I've been playing that, still enjoying it, trying to carve out time to sit down and just vacate my brain and just play the game. And then I'm playing Grand Theft Auto V online still, and uh, I'm enjoying it. I, you know, I found good ways to, to make some money. I've got a meth lab. I've got, you know, uh, you do these little runs for that. And um, it's fun. It's fun. It's not fantastic, but it's an easy game to jump into and out of and just fuck around in. And I love the passive mode that you can do. We talked about that on a couple episodes ago where you don't get dicked around by all the people in the free mode. They can't touch yeah. you. Um, and then the free PS Plus game that we got, Ghost Runner, on PS5, I powered that bitch up. And let me tell you, it is a new fucking level of hard. And uh, I... I've heard it's hard. I yeah. died. So they introduce you to the gameplay mechanics, and then they give you a level. And the first level, I died 96 times. It keeps track. Really? I died... The controls are kind of fucking weird to get... I died 96 times, and I'm a pretty okay gamer... It's fucking tough. So I got through the first level. I created a little video clip of me doing the hardest part in that level. And when I finally did it, I saved the video. And I posted it on our YouTube channel. And it looks fucking easy when you just watch the video. But let's see you do it. Because it's fucking hard. So I just deleted it. That, I quit yeah. the game. I deleted it. I, I wanted to see what it was about. Not for me. Jake? So, yeah, first-person platforming cannot... It, a lot of times, it's not easy. Well... And that's what that whole game is based Not on. Not to mention it's all melee also. So melee is fucking tough right. in first person games. It's like a hotline Miami style game. Every every time you get through just a little bit of the parkour shit, a voice will kick in. And it's like, you have to get to the blah, 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 blah. And every time the voice kicks in, that's an auto save. And then it gives you another, another little chunk of the map to master. And then it's like Hotline Miami over and over and over and over and over again, the first person. And then by the time you get to the yeah. end of the level, you're like, oh, fuck, I got through that shit. And then it says how many times you died because it's almost like they know you're going to die a million times. 96 fucking times. Unbelievable. It seems like they, it seems like they could have ramped it up a little better. Like instead of unless there's only so many levels and they kind of just threw you in. I don't know, but that's my hot know. take on it. Yeah, so I'm not really playing. I'm still playing just Horizon. Okay, I mean, I've been trying. I've been trying to put a lot of hours into Horizon because I'm trying to sort of get through the game, but I don't want to just mainline the story. So, because the way that I, the way that I always play games like this, especially a game like Horizon that has such, you know, such engrossing side content is that I do like a main story and then I do like all of the side quests <laughs> that are like that, that level or lower to try and like way. kind of, cause I, 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 maybe this is just, this might just, this might be bad for some people or maybe some people would make fun of me or whatever, but I like to have myself be, a little bit over leveled when I go into the main story missions because I want to just I want to be able to enjoy the story and not sit there and f fucking struggle fighting you know some boss or so because in every single story mission inevitably has some fucking boss in it whether it's like a a bandit or a you know a big machine or you know something and so um you know, I, I I played it a bunch today too. I don't know that I played it as much as you did, but I'm right around like 34 hours, I think. Okay. And uh, so I've put in about 
10, 11 hours in the last week. And uh, which doesn't sound like a lot to some people, but that's a lot for me. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm still still really enjoying it. I'm, I don't, I have no idea how far I am into the story. I just, I know that like most of the map is still fucking covered in fog of war. So, mm-hmm. cause in, I don't even know if I mentioned this before, but one of the things that bugs me about it is that they, they don't let you, they don't let you just like do the tall necks in this game. Like they did in the other game. Yeah. In the last game, you could just run around the map, do all the tall necks, and then you can see everything and you can kind of pick and choose what you want to do. In this game, it's like they're putting tall necks out there that you need special abilities to be able to do. And you can't can't do them until you get so far into the story. And I think there's like a little bit of a balancing issue there because it's like I'm like fucking 35 hours into the game and I've only done one tall neck. Come on. You know what I mean? Like, but there's all these like fucking squiggles all over the map because I've been just like, like the fog you know, of venturing war looks into like the fog of war jigsaw puzzle to do yeah. all these. Yeah. Like, so anyway, we don't have to talk about Ryzen, but, but it, it that said, dude, the game is awesome. It is. I, I cannot tell you every single time I play that game, I am just blown away by how good it looks. It just, there's something about it. I think it's just because we're on the verge of spring. So like, you know, we're sitting there and it's real shitty weather today here and I'm playing it and I'm playing these like fucking lush green forests or even like these desert sequences. Mm-hmm. And it just like everything looks good. It's sunny. Yeah. It just feels good when you're playing it and it looks good. So it's good. Yeah. For the listeners, it's snowing here where we're at today. So there's and it's supposed to be even worse tomorrow. There's so that. Yeah, so let's let's move into the news, shall we, Jake? I'm actually trying to take some of the notes for YouTube right now um, because I want to I want to do the. Uh, let me back it up. I it, I get ahead of myself in my brain. So in YouTube, somebody hit at one point said you guys should put chapters in your podcast so we can skip to the things we want to hear. I think there's a pro to that, and I think there's a con to that. The, the pro is is that it's more accessible to the user, right? The listener, the watcher, whatever. You can just find the topic you want to hear us talk about. The double con is, is number one, it takes a little extra time on my part in post. And number two, it's you might miss something. If you're just skipping looking for something, you might actually miss something on the show that you would benefit from by just jumping to things that you think you want to hear than stuff that we're going to force down your throat. So anyways... Um, I still recommend you listen to the whole thing, but I'm trying to get some notes on here about it. Welcome to the PS This Is Awesome Patreon page. For those of you that don't know, my name is Fred Oakman. And I'm Jake Peters. And we're a PlayStation podcast currently in our 10th year. Our first episode aired in July of 2012, where we discussed and speculated on the arrival of the PS4. Over the years, we've used this podcast to take a break from adulting, share our love of video games, and in particular, PlayStation. The audio podcast is available on all major streaming services, and we have recently made the leap to uploading video content and video podcasting to our YouTube channel, as well as the very occasional Twitter post or live stream. Over the years, we have covered everything from PS3 to PS Vita through the launches of PS4, PSVR, and now PS5. As our audience has grown over the years, we have decided to start this Patreon with the hopes of creating a medium in which we can give you the opportunity to help support our show. And as a test bed, we're starting with a single tier. It's called the one and only $1 Club. So with your support at the $1 level, we're going to mail you a premium vinyl cut sticker and give you a shout out on the podcast. But at this time, unfortunately, we can only ship to the U.S. and Canada. But this is subject to change depending on your interest. So whether you're new to the show or you're a frequent flyer, we are forever thankful for your support and hope you can find it in your little gaming heart to join us in the one and only $1 Club. Until next time, like PlayStation, Podcasting, and Patreon, P.S. This this is awesome. So let's go into the news. Jake... Um, Last we spoke, we were talking about 
Gran Turismo 7 and how fans were really, really upset about the impromptu update that changed the entire economy of that game. So as a response to this backlash from all the players, the CEO Polyphony, who also is a professional driver, which I didn't know, but I read that he was, responded by indicating, in quotes, Thank you for your continued support and feedback on Gran Turismo 7. Your voices have not gone unheard. And his name is Kazunori uh, Yamachi, I believe. Um, So Mm -hmm. by way of an apology, all players who log into uh, Gran Turismo 7 before the 25th of April will receive 1 million in-game credits as a goodwill gesture. And then uh, in addition to this, there are other positive changes being made to balance the game out and make right the wrongs from the patch. So that's good that they're responding so fast to this, I think. Um, do you have any other things? But they shouldn't have fucking done it to begin with. I don't disagree <laughs> with that. Yeah, yeah. It's nice that they're actually like being quick, though, about it, right? Because they, they know what's at stake. I mean, I mean they, have a, they have self-interest in this, but it's still nice. Anything on that, Jake? Um. No, I, I I'm just glad that they're they're rectifying it and fixing it for the people that are that um that are invested in the game because that game has such a huge audience that it seems crazy to uh it seems crazy to like try and rip them off like that. Yeah, I don't know. I agree. I agree. Well, let's move on to the next news point. As a promotion, this is this I actually think is pretty cool. As a promotion for the Netflix series Stranger Things, Far Cry Six is receiving a Stranger Things mission. Um, and it, it might be a string of missions, but it's like one kind of through point in the game. And it's a download; it's free. And in the press release, it states that players will be able to explore recreations of iconic locations inspired by the Stranger Things series. And then there's a pretty cool promotional trailer for this. And the update is free to anyone who owns Far Cry 6. So this looks really awesome. They clearly put a ton of work into it. And uh, it makes it look like the TV show. So I posted a quick image from it here. And it looks fucking dope. So. Dude, I just wa- I was just watching the trailer for it. I am fucking all in. Yeah. I'm gonna down. I'm gonna re-download Far Cry Six right now. <laughs> not right, not this instant, but as soon as we're done with the podcast, I don't want to play this fucking mission because it looks so good. Do you guys watch Stranger? It looks Things? so good. Do you guys watch it? What's that? Do you watch Stranger Things? I we didn't watch the newest season. Yeah. But we watched the first. The, so we watched the first two seasons, but we didn't watch the third season. Yeah. Um. I don't know why. I we just it just passed us. Yeah, by if, I fell off it too. But it, I mean, it, for those who don't know, there's a there's a parallel universe called the Upside Down, and uh, everything's just fucking crazy in the Upside Down. There's like monsters and aliens and shit, but it's still like your world, but it's all fucked up. And uh, they're doing this apparently in Far Cry, where you can be in the Upside Down, and it looks so cool. Yeah, they're like they're, they're like making a version of Yara, which is the world of Far Cry Six, <laughs> but like the fucking upside down from stranger things and there's oh man it looks it, the trailer i just watch it, it looks fucking awesome i'm surprised that like this wasn't like a really big announcement like it just kind of like slipped in you know it just kind of slid in dude the fr- the very beginning of the trailer they show like uh the main character picking up chorizo's collar and it's like they fucking kill Trezo. I'm gonna be pissed because Trezo is the best side character in the game. I mean, is that is that I, your pet? There, that's your pet in Far Cry Six, right? So, so there are other like they're all like there's a bunch of side. There's a bunch of companions, and, and Trezo is just one of them. But Trezo is like the little wiener dog that's in a wheelchair. It's like the cutest fucking thing. Okay, and he's like one of the coolest characters. Mm-hmm. But uh, his whole like shtick is that like he's so cute that you like send him out and the bad guys get distracted and like play oh, with them cool. and stuff and you can like <laughs> sneak up and kill he him probably and gets like, eaten by a demogorgon awesome. yeah but now now i did oh man if they have a fucking demogorgon Teresa, oh, i gotta download this i'm really <laughs> yeah. excited yeah uh, maybe I'll, hopefully i'll play it by by the podcast next week i hope maybe you do I'll, if it's just I'll one play. mission it's totally digestible it's probably really awesome Let's move on. Uh, we discussed briefly on episode 214, Jake, 
that the pricing structure of Grand Theft Auto 5 on the PS5 was a little weird and how it's priced lower than what it can be purchased at on Microsoft platforms. And now this has been seemingly clarified as a subscription model for GTA Plus has been announced for PS5 users. The monthly subscription for Grand Theft Auto 5 Plus is $5.99 a month and will give players $500,000 in-game cash every month. And as well as I get other freebies, like free cars, free different options. I don't know if you get free cars, but more unlockables, different shit that they give you. The other the other boon to, to subscribing to Grand Theft Auto Plus, it rewards players with not needing to be a PlayStation Plus member to enjoy the game online. So if your only interest is Grand Theft Auto Five, this is actually a pretty sweet deal because then you don't have to pay for Plus. Um, so I don't know. But then again, it's six bucks. Yeah, yeah, it is a good deal. Yeah, it's a good deal. If that's what you want, is it? If that's what you want, if, if you're, yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're a, if you're a guy, no, who, it's not uh, a good fucking deal. Plays. Hold on, I, if you're just doing it for the for the ability to use the game online, it's not a deal. Because you have to you have to play it online, so you have to be a PlayStation Plus member to play it online. But if it's five ninety nine. That's seventy one dollars a year, which is more than the price of PS Plus. So, you could get all those free games on PS Plus and still have access to play Grand Theft Auto Five online, or you can buy Grand Theft Auto Plus and pay seventy two dollars and have that be the only game you get for free. Well, you don't even get it for free, but you know what I mean. Get bonuses for that game. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it, but I'm sure there's some f- fucking people out there that want that five hundred thousand dollar in game cash because, trust me. I am hustling in my online game world, and I have about six hundred thousand dollars after I've purchased the things that I've had to purchase, and I want to unlock the Dr. Dre missions, but I can't do it until I buy like a some sort of fancy estate or something and get in with the richy rich people, and I can't do that till I have a million dollars. So they're they're kind of making me run missions to build up my bank account. So yeah, I like I don't know enough about. Yeah, I don't know enough about GTA Online to be able to really comment on it. Yeah. Anyways, five hundred thousand dollars a a month is is a pretty good boon. But I because you can buy like the shark cards on there for like ten bucks, and uh, that's like in game cash. And I think if you do the math, it's cheaper to just be a GTA Plus member than to buy like the shark card stuff. So hmm. so I, I think it's. Yeah, so anyways, let's move on. Let's move on. We talked briefly about Moss Book 2 on the last episode of our podcast, and we're bringing up a lot of hits from the last episode, the one that made that person drop the show. Um, but what we're what we're seeing here is, is that that's a PSVR game, but apparently PSVR 2 is actually in the wild, kind of. It's it's been experienced and being experienced in corners, GDC. corners of the world at GDC yeah. behind closed doors. Yes, so it's actually looks like it's probably done and made. So the interesting thing is, is that Sony are apparently showing this to the game developers and letting them use the unit. So they're getting hands-on experience, and with uh, the unit, a Valve developer, I guess a longtime Valve employee, tweeted, and I put in quotes. Had one of those VR moments today playing in the new PSVR 2 HMD. You know where the world just feels different when you return? So good. Thanks, Shuhei Yoshida and Greg Rice for the demo and chat. And in addition, another developer from a game developer called Truant Pixel, who Truant Pixel is actually working on a VR game. It's a motorcycle game called Runner, which looks fucking rad. But said that in a statement from said that, that the statement that the Val developer made was not hyperbole it was not hyperbolic meaning that the immersion is so fucking good on VR2 that when you do take the headset off you feel like you're in another world again so um huh. yeah so it's really exciting news and it's also great news that Valve is trying this headset out behind closed doors. So I think the possibility of Half-Life Alex coming to PSVR 2 at this point is inevitable. I mean, that's pretty much the nail in the coffin for me to believe that it's going to happen. But the runner developer also indicated that the haptics of VR 2 
are way more immersive than you would actually think they'd be. And uh, in quotes, stop sweating about the wire. It'll disappear when you start playing. So that's from a developer's point of view. Now, I don't know if they were, because they're like, VIPs of Sony getting pulled in to try this if they feel an obligation to talk positive about the headset or not. But that's what they said. And uh, I I tend to agree. Like, even with the VR1, I don't really notice the wire with the exception of the way it hangs and I feel it on my shoulder a little bit because I put it behind me. So it'd be cool if they have, like, some sort of way to keep the wire off of your body. I don't know how they would do that, you know. But there's probably a way to harness that thing so that it's not, like doesn't feel like you have like a necklace on or something you know well i think the why i mean the wire it seems like it's going to be much less substantial in the new unit so you probably won't notice it nearly as much because i did notice like with the, on the old unit the first gen vr it like because it was like it did sometimes feel like it was pulling yeah on you a little bit if you got wrapped around you or something so it's a. Uh, it, it, I'll be curious to see how how it works out. I'm just watching a trailer for this um, the motorcycle runner game. game. Looks pretty uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, it's like a first. I don't know. Um, it, it's like a, the only thing that I'm not like super stoked about is it's like a motorcycle combat game. Like I wish it was <laughs> like just a, a fucking or motorcycle <laughs> racing game. Yeah, yeah, that would be right in your. But it's house. but it looks very it looks very like 80s sci-fi aesthetic or 80s like cyberpunk kind like of neon so. neo like fucking weird graphics but it does look cool i had never heard of that game before it's called runner and they're yeah the cinematics look fucking dope yeah. it looks like it looks like a it looks like a uh like a vhs of like a fucking 80s anime movie or something yeah. it's very cool yeah i'm all i'm all in psvr2 this is good news this is good news coming out and it and it's had a lot of praise and not just from the two people I mentioned. If you guys want to read more about the VR2 things that are coming out, I pulled that off of pushsquare.com. And then Jake, that game you mentioned that I may like, but you said the loading screens took forever, the ascension, the ascent, or is it ascension? It's the ascent, right? It's the the ascent. And the loading screens to to clarify, they took forever on like the base model Xbox One from fucking last generation. So I don't know what what the loading screens are like on current gen. Yeah. Just putting that out yeah, there. Yeah, well, it got a significant boon on PS5. So much, in fact, that the developer, Curve, Curve Games, took time to talk about all the specific upgrades they've made for the PS5 version. And uh, was most of the upgrades were mostly a result of player feedback to give the game a significant quality of life upgrade. So if you're interested in that game, it sounds like it got a bit of a, uh, I don't want to say a facelift, but it got a bit of a, uh, not even necessarily an overhaul, some TLC to make some of the complaints. I got to look better. into, I want to look into the, the updates and like the actual patch list to see the patch notes to see what they did because like I mentioned on the podcast multiple times, the game is fucking awesome. Yeah. There is just some like key things that hold it back. Like, you know, making you there, if there's some glitchy, there's some bugginess to it. Load times took forever on the version I played. And like one of the most notable things that drives me fucking crazy is, you know, you would have to go from point A to point B to do a mission. And in the middle, when you're walking from point A to point B, there'd be a group of enemies that are way over your level. So yeah. you'd have to like fucking cheese the game to get around them just to get to the next story mission. Like it's just very, very bad like design in that regard. But if they rectify some of that, maybe decrease the level of some of those mobs that you come across and stuff to make the game a little bit more balanced, dude, it's fucking awesome. And I, I really recommend that if the game like runs well on PS5 and that they did some some work to the balance of it, that like I think people should play it. I think it, I don't know what it's gonna cost on PS5, but uh, I would definitely be interested in jumping back in. Um, and it's co-op too, so if you want to play with someone else, you can play it co-op, just like you can Dead Nation or or any other like those House Mark kind of top-down shooters. Mm-hmm. So pretty cool. Yeah, from what I saw, it looks really cool. So that's that's coming out this week. Um, and then moving forward, I don't know if you read this, but there is a lot of talk buzzing about how Ubisoft had been or is prepping a monumental showcase 
Jake. It's going to feature 20 plus games. And the rumor comes way of push of, of a Push Square article where they cite Tom Henderson, who works at X Fire, or writes for XFire.com as a source. Apparently, he breaks news yeah. here and there. And uh, some of the alleged titles that are going to be featured on the unannounced showcase. Allegedly, again, there's a lot of maybes on this little news point, but it is kind of exciting because I forgot about some of these. Skull and Bones, there's a new Avatar game, uh, there's a sequel to Immortals Phoenix Rising in the works, Assassin's Creed Rift, Prince of Persia, both that remake of Sands of Time and a new title, maybe a fresh glimpse of Beyond Good and Evil 2, The Division Heartland, and a Division mobile game. A, the, looks at the Splinter Cell remake, just to name a few. So that's going to be an awesome showcase if and when that happens. That's a lot of awesome shit. Dude. I can tell you, I give a shit about exactly two and a half things on this list. <laughs> I think it all looks great. I Number one, fucking Immortal sequel because I've talked nonstop on the show about how much I fucking love Immortal is Immortals Phoenix Rising. Mm-hmm. Two is uh, the Splinter Cell remake. I really want to see what's going on with that and get a really good idea of what it's going to look like going forward. No interest in Division and, Heartland. Well, that's that's the half. That's the half. As I am really interested <laughs> in the Division Heartland. Because it's supposed to be like a free to play thing or something, so there's there's always baggage with games like that. So and it's Ubisoft. I would so. love for there to be like a free to play division game that's just like the Division Two, but I don't have to fucking pay for it. Done right, but you know that it's not going to be that. I hope that's true, but I don't know. And then Beyond so, Good, but and I Evil. am curious. Beyond Good and Evil Two looks sweet. I didn't play the first one, mm. and they they've been Beyond Good and Evil Two has been in the works for so fucking long at this point. That I, I, I honestly don't want to play it just because it's like I'm sick of hearing Out of about principle. it. The, they, they announced Beyond Good and Evil two like fucking ten years ago. But do you remember? And that's not even hyperbole. Do you remember how they announced it? They announced it like, oh, the community is going to make this game, and it's like what? And they were doing this thing where like you could submit ideas, create a login, create textures, submit your own music, submit your own fucking ideas and artwork and. You know, and they're like, oh, yeah, then we're, you know, you guys can work with the developers to help make this thing happen. And it's like, that's such a fucking loosey goosey, shitty way to make a sequel to a game that's beloved. Like, just have a little balls and have a little direction and do it yourself. You know, I, and, and if you fucking piss I mean, off, I the can fans, understand you piss them. The I... What the hell are you doing? I can understand them not wanting. Sorry, I was, I, uh, Forgot a bottle opener, so I was using my oh, desk. Yeah. I thought you were um, squishing spiders. So, <laughs> no. Uh, so now I lost my train of thought. Uh, so yeah, they they um, I don't know. They, Beyond Good and Evil Two, they did all that stuff, and it's like, why? Like it's like they didn't want to invest in the game, which I get. But it's like, why are you even making it then? Like if if you're not sure that the audience is going to be there for it, why are you fucking making it? And it's like the whole thing with Mirror's Edge. They probably don't want to fall into the same trap as is Mirror's Edge, which I can't remember. Is Mirror's Edge a, a Ubisoft game? I don't know. Re- that's EA. Yeah, I don't Pretty remember. sure that's EA. Um, Mirror's Edge. Uh, let's see. Yes, that's an EA game. Okay. So I think that they're they're probably a little bit gun shy because Mirror's Edge, everyone's like, Mirror's Edge, Mirror's Edge, Mirror's Edge, fucking love it, fucking love it. And then they made Mirror's Edge 2 finally because people wouldn't shut the fuck up about it. And then it flopped. It sold like shit. My understanding is that it was a really good game, but people didn't buy it. So it's like Beyond Good and Evil has not been relevant since like fucking the first Xbox. So like why why are they trying to bring it back? Like I, I get the feeling that unless this game comes out and it's literally a fucking 10 out of 10, nobody's gonna play it. Or the people that love it are going to play it, but it's not going to sell gangbusters. I yeah. don't see how it can. Yeah, I I enjoyed Beyond Good and Evil One, and uh, it was it was a fun game. I played it on my PC back in the day. I really liked it. It was great for the time. I don't remember how it holds up, but I have fond memories of it. Like, you know, rose colored glasses. I, I don't. I'm not saying the game was amazing, 
but I did like it. So when they announced the sequel, I was kind of excited. But yeah, it has been a while. But anyways, the other games are just kind of meh. Avatar looked kind of cool. Um, not I don't really care about Skull and Bones, although I like the idea of being pirates and stuff. But <sighs> Dude, if, Skull, if Skull and Bones, dude. I, I know that I, I haven't read a lot about Skull and Bones, but there was talk that it could be kind of like the ship portions of Assassin's Creed 4, mm-hmm. but that's like the fucking game. That could be awesome. That was like one of the best parts about Assassin's Creed 4 yeah. was the whole like having a ship and the ship combat and, and all that stuff was really, really neat. So um, I'm really curious about like what Skull and Bones is, but it seems like that game is kind of in development hell. So I don't like... Like, I'm really curious. I hope that they announce this showcase and it's just banger after banger. All this like, shit's kind pretty of much need, done. Yeah. They kind of need that because they're sort of, they've been sort of like waffling a little bit in terms of their ability to put out like really good games. Won't, won't, won't. I mean, don't get me wrong. I loved Far Cry 6. <laughs> I loved Far Cry 6, but it's still just Far Cry. You know, it's not. You know, like I prefer Far Cry Five because I like the setting more and the gameplay is basically the same. There, are, there are new things like there's some parkour shit that's kind of cool and the island's huge, which is great. Whatever. Um, yeah, they're not they're not reinventing like, the wheel here. Yeah, so like it's not like when they announced the first Division game and that was like a phenomenon because people are like, "What the fuck is this? This looks awesome." That was the last game that they released that that people were just like, oh, this is different. This is really fucking cool. Right, 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 right. So, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. We will. And I skipped a news point. I'm going to come back to it here. Um, So, the long-awaited update to the PS5 firmware, it didn't roll out. It's going to roll out. I have my notes incorrect here. But the variable, variable refresh rate, better as VRR, which was promised when they were talking about the PS5 at console launch is, is finally coming out in the next couple months along with support for HDMI 2.1. So Does your does your TV have VRR yet? Yes. Cuz yes, they updated what, okay. it. Okay. Yep. Okay, cuz I know when you bought it it, it did didn't have yet. it, right? Yeah, I've got it now. Yeah. Okay. Good Next memory. I'll, I'll be curious. What's that? Good memory, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll be curious if this if I actually like if it's utilized in a way where I really notice a difference. But yeah, um, it's it's. I'm pretty sure my TV has it. I guess I'll have to look and see. Yeah, I think essentially, um, what 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 does VR do? It's essentially, supposed to smooth things out even more, right? Essentially, that's that's the the layman's way of explaining yeah. it. You would say. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. All right. Let's move on to the next point here. On the heels of the next gen update. To Cyberpunk 2077, there is yet another patch to fix some common annoying issues. Nothing big here, but it is nice to know they're continuing to support this game. Um, Jake, do you have any interest in Cyberpunk 2077 as you approach the end of uh, Horizon? Um, to be fair, I do want to play it. Yeah. I'm just... Oh man, I I don't know when I'm going to though. Is the problem? I've got it on my on my PS5, but I also today I haven't played it yet. I haven't started it up, but I just downloaded Elden Ring, mm-hmm. so I want to try that out. I don't see that game panning out for me, but it might. And then <laughs> I I really want to. I know we have a we have all the time in the world to get through Mass Effect, so I'm not like. I'm not anxious to jump right into two, but we, two is fucking awesome. Yeah, so I'd like to play that. It's going to be a time but consuming I, game. But I do want to, I do want to get back to, uh, Infernax. And I don't know if I'm ever going to end up beating, um, whatever that other game was that I've been talking about. The uh, crazy long name game. Wonder Labyrinth, whatever. Um, but that game is really enjoyable, so I would like to get back to that too. But Infernax is the game that I played most recently uh, that was not Horizon that I really, really would like to get back to and play a little bit more of. Am I going to beat it? I don't know. Because uh, I, I was never really very good at the <laughs> Castle, the old Castlevania They're games. They're so fucking hard, so, man. So, so, yeah, so Infernax is a little bit of a challenge to me yeah. mechanically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
but I do enjoy everything about the game and what it's doing and the music and the mm-hmm. atmosphere and all that stuff. So I would like to get back to it, but as far as cyberpunk goes, yeah, I, I have, like I said, I have it installed on my PS five and I do want to get to it. So, um, Maybe that'll be next after I uh, next for my PlayStation after I try out Elden Ring, assuming nothing else launches. Because I think um, what came out what came out this week, Tiny Tina Wonderlands and Ghostwire Tokyo, and I think both of them kind of released to like mediocre reception. So yeah. neither of them are like begging me to start playing them right away. But I, I am still interested. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, so <clears throat> while we're on the news talking about CD Projekt Red, there's there's some notable things to bring up here. They've announced they are working on a new Witcher title, and everyone jumped to conclusions saying, oh, it's Witcher 4, it's Witcher 4. But then they kind of got back on the horn on Twitter, and they were like, they clarified, they never said it was actually the Witcher 4 it's like a new saga in the Witcher universe. It sounds like maybe not following Geralt. My guess is is that your Siri would be my guess that you play Siri the whole mm-hmm. way because you do get to play Siri in The Witcher Three. My guess is that it's Siri based, but uh, it, they are using Unreal Engine Five for the Witcher, uh, the new Witcher game. So I can only fucking imagine the eye candy that this game is going to be if they do it right. And instantly when this was announced. Everybody forgot about the shit show that Cyberpunk 2077 was. Like, all they had to say was, we're working on a Witcher game. And everyone's like, oh, I can't fucking wait. I can't fucking wait. This is amazing. You know, and, and instantly, they are, boom. They they are absolutely, uh, what is what is the word? Absolved of all of their wrongdoings with Cyberpunk 2077. Dude, what pisses me off about this, too, is that nobody <laughs> remembers... That The Witcher 3 was a fucking mess when it launched. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Maybe not quite as bad as Cyberpunk was, but it was really bad when it launched. The only reason nobody remembers this is because nobody fucking played it until after it was fixed. And yeah. so so it didn't it got that boon from the show and all this stuff. And nobody played The Witcher 3 until after it was fixed. So everyone's like, The Witcher 3 is great, the Witcher 3 is great, the Witcher 3 is great. And then you know, I am still not convinced that CD Projekt Red can release a new game that is not broken. So until they do that, I am going to assume that whatever they release, I'm not going to play right away because it's going to be broken at launch. So I, I know that's very cynical of me, but but they just haven't shown me anything otherwise. And this new Witcher game... I hope they learn their lesson, but for all we know, it could be like another fucking Gwent game, or it could be like a, you know, like it could be, dude, it could be something crazy, which would, to me would be cool, but like, imagine like a, like an adventure game or like a visual novel that like follows fucking Dandelion or something. Yeah. Or, or like in his escapades like, or whatever. It, yeah. It's, I don't like, know. And, it, and it's called like something like, uh, uh, you can't. I, I was gonna say a bard's tale, but that's actually a fucking game. But, that's actually a game. Yeah, yeah, but like whatever the fuck, like something like that, and like he starts singing a story, then it fades in, and then you get to play that little mini story. That'd be cool. Yeah, it would be cool. Like there's so many things they could do, and that they, you know, all the years that freaking, you know, you could have the, you could have the main character. What I think would be more interesting than follow following Siri would be like, what if the main character was like Yennefer? Or um, Triss, uh, or, like Triss, mm-hmm. like one of the like instead of it being like a sword character, what if it's a like a mage character, where like the whole thing is is all based around magic and like the I I'm sorry I don't remember the names, but like the school, like the 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 mage school that all these these Karamoran or, or oh, you mean not Karamoran no. the uh, other place? Um, yeah, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but the place where like they make all of the fucking wizards and witches and shit. But like, um, it could be it could be pretty neat, and I I think that that would be kind of cool. So in in the fact that they came out and like freaking checked everybody's expectations on this tells me that it's probably not Witcher Four, but maybe it's like oh well we were just saying that because now we're gonna actually surprise them with the Witcher Four and it's gonna be you know. 
Girl again. It's gonna be The Witcher 2077. Oh, <laughs> the Witcher. Cyber Witcher. 2077. Yeah. It would be. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest. Like, I'm not the biggest. I like The Witcher, but I like The Witcher the the franchise, but. I don't think that Geralt is that compelling of a character. I love him. It's everybody It's everybody that surrounds him. It's the whole thing. The that, whole kit and caboodle. But, like, the reason why Geralt is interesting is because of his interactions with Yasker, or Dandelion, as he's called in the games. It's because of his interactions with fucking Yennefer and, you know, the, the other characters in the world. It's not necessarily that, like, if there was a game where you were literally just following Geralt around doing, like, hunting shit, but, like, he wasn't actually interacting with any of these other characters, he would be a pretty fucking boring character. Yeah. So, but that that's a little bit of a digression on my part. Fair enough. But if it is a new Witcher game, I, I'm interested as long as it's not something that's like a genre that's out of my wheelhouse. I would definitely be interested. I think in it's going it to be just like The like, Witcher Three because it was so successful. It's going to be like The Witcher, Witcher, the, the Siri story or the you know whatever the fuck they want to call it, like Frost, like Frost, Frost Pendant or something. Because they released like an image, it was like The Witcher medallion, which Geralt's like wolf medallion in like snow, and there was like blood on it. It's gonna be like blood on the snow. What if Geralt's dead? It's like a it's like a freaking uh, spoiler. Um, I think that? he dies in the books. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure he does. What's the what's that? Uh, Gotham Knights. They pull like a fucking Gotham Knights, and they're like, "Oh, Geralt's dead, and now it's up to fucking Siri to save, save. the universe from the wild hunts." Bullshit. You yeah. know, neighbor <laughs> or whatever. So like. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It could be cool. I, I, the, the world of the Witcher is really fun. So like, yeah. I'm interested. Do they just they just build very, very awesome worlds immersive. to be in? Yeah, cool. So like, I I'm really honestly that's what I'm more interested than anything. It, they they could have the freaking main character be a two by four. <laughs> but if I if, but if I'm walking around, you know, or, or like you know, bouncing around as a two by four in this immersive world that is the witcher or something like the witcher Mm -hmm. you know it's a great game in my opinion assuming it's not technically broken fair enough fair enough so i wanted to touch since we're talking on witcher and everybody knows i'm a really big fan of the witcher and the witcher 3 wild hunt there was like some developers at cd project red had like alluded to that there was like a easter egg in this game that nobody had found yet and this one youtube guy found it so there was dlc in for the witcher free dlc that come out nah, some was free and some was this was paid it was blood and wine and there was a side quest in blood and wine um and and what happened in this is like there was a, a woman who was cursed she has a curse on her and you as Geralt ha- have the ability to remove this curse from her at the price of of shortening her life so she could live a normal life and not be cursed but only have like seven years left or she could remain cursed and whatever her ailment was she could live until she naturally would die but she would have this fucking curse looming for the rest of her life and and there's a point in the game where you're like are you sure this is what you want and she's like yes i want to travel the world i want to be curse free i want to be able to enjoy my life yada 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 so if you choose that option you complete that side quest there's this dude on the internet that fucking found this Easter egg, and this is what CD Projekt Red had been alluding to that no one had found. In game, 2,500 days must pass after you complete this side quest mission, which in game is seven years. <laughs> and if you go back and follow this person, they they die. You find them dead. Like, they actually die. But it's kind of fucked because you could still have conversations with their corpse. So I don't know that the CD Projekt really thought that anyone would actually see this through. But they found a way to hack the clock in the game on the PC using, like, a code to speed up time. And this guy had spent a lot of time trying to figure out what the fuck this Easter egg was. He's like, it has to be this Vivian quest. So I'm going to go seven years in the future in the game and see if I can figure out 
if it's her. And sure enough, like she just and in the YouTube video, he follows her on the like the last day before it hits seven years on her normal, you know, NPC path, and she walks into the room and her body just fucking collapses and it's like on its side. <laughs> and she's like half in the floor and half out the floor. And he's like, I'm kind of disappointed that this is probably what they're talking about. And he and he's trying to talk to her and she's like, Hey, and your body's dead. So that was the final <laughs> Easter egg. It's fucking hilarious. But it's cool that That's they, really cool. It's cool they did that. And then in the game, he makes no uh the YouTube guy um, makes note that there's actually a scene where you lift the, the top off of a tomb and there's a vampire just laying in there. And he's like, is it year 1329 yet? And Geralt's like, no. And he's like, well, what the fuck are you doing? You know, and the guy, like, he's like, cover me back up. So, like, the guy's wondering if maybe if you can find that year in the game, perhaps maybe this vampire comes out. I Who knows? Stupid shit like that. Huh. And that's what's so fun about some of these games. The attention to detail and, like, the little things they hide. The games are so massive. How could you possibly ever find it? It's like the whole myth, that, like, in GTA 3, that there was a Sasquatch in the woods. Like, you could just maybe find it. You know? Like, all these weird, like huge game environments and people are like oh yeah this thing exists you know, there's people that, that say like there's a ghost that haunts Minecraft and like there's you know all these weird spooky things you know there's all, tons of easter eggs in, in Red Dead Redemption like aliens and fucking crazy shit that like ghosts in the woods that you can just stumble on which will scare the shit out of you but these huge open world games there's a lot of cool hidden shit but that was the last thing to be discovered per the developer in The Witcher 3 so that game is now 100% uh, I don't know experienced so discovered yeah so fucking that's great. cool I, I mean I The Witcher 3 was one of those games kind of like uh, I don't know why but like Skyrim I never got overwhelmed in Skyrim anytime I found a place that I'd never been before yeah. I was always super pumped about it. But for whatever reason, the way that the Witcher did it, it was like they would just populate the map with all those fucking question marks. And then it just was so overwhelming that it was like, I I can't like you get like locked up because there's so much stuff for you to like find and experience. Cause it's like, I think like the one thing that, you know, people always talk about how since The Witcher 3 rose to greatness, we'll say people always talk about how, oh, The Witcher is the new fucking goat. Like Bethesda Game Studios, you got nothing with your Elder Scrolls shit, blah, blah, blah. But the one thing that I think The Witcher really does wrong compared to the like the Bethesda stuff is just like the Bethesda games don't beat you over the head with the shit that you're that you could like if you miss something you just fucking miss it if you don't walk up and you don't see it you miss it it's like so but if you find something that's new you're like oh this is the this is new it's right now i'm gonna go see what it is yeah whereas like the witcher you walk into an area and they're like oh you don't have to do any exploration but here's fucking 50 question marks on your map and here there's new things all over and you, you mm. have to go to them and see if you even want to do them or not. Yeah. 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 But you have to, but it's just, it's overwhelming. And so, uh, I hope that this new Witcher game, if it is an open world adventure game that, uh, or, or open world RPG that they, they take a little bit, they, uh, they learn a little bit more from games like the elder scrolls or even from my, what I understand the Elden rings like this too, where instead of just and even Horizon does this, but there's there's a lot less, so it's less overwhelming. They just puke shit on the map at you, and they're just like, "Here's all the stuff you can do," and it's like, "Okay, well now I'm just overwhelmed, and I'm never gonna finish this game." So I, I can totally sympathize. And that now, granted, if you're a kid or something like that, and you got all the time in the world, and you're playing one game, that's probably fucking awesome. But as an adult playing this game, I'm just like, oh, I'm never gonna finish this. <laughs> so I get um, it. Yeah, the, yeah. I think part but of it's the- cool. I, I'm. It's cool that they're putting these Easter eggs in. Like I, I love story. I'm never gonna find this shit. But I, I love reading stories about people finding Easter eggs in games. I think it's really cool. It is really cool. And, and the thing about The Witcher that that was always so compelling with me was like every single of those question mark question marks you're talking about they seemed relevant like they weren't just random fucking fetch quests man like they they were legit mini quests 
and uh, always interesting. Every single one was interesting. And, oh, yeah. And you no. could fail them, and then Definitely. if you failed them, you couldn't revisit them. Like, if you had, like, a, a mission, like, oh, go do this, go defeat this thing, or do, do whatever. If you fucked something up, and the thing got away, or... Uh, you know, it's, maybe it's a decision tree thing where you have an option to kill a monster or save a monster. You can't go back and change it. Like, so, and then it's just like the side quest was done. You either failed it or you completed it. And it was like, there you go. So some of those side quests could be failed, but never replayed on a playthrough, which is, which gave them, raised the ante a little bit on them. You know what I mean? It, it gave them like some some meaning i don't know it wasn't just like it felt more immersive to me but anyways let's yeah let's talk about the last point of news and i don't even know that it's even worth mentioning it is worth mentioning but i don't know what it means um closing news point because we have no idea what this studio is doing as far as i know or what they're capable of sony acquired haven studios which is being led by jay raymond and sony announced a partnership last year with haven studios but they have recently gone all in to add Haven um, Studios to their PlayStation Studios lineup. I don't know why the fuck they bought this studio. What do they do? I, they haven't I, shown I literally, anything. I do not understand it. The studio is less. It's like less than a year old, and or maybe it's a year old. They can't have anything of value to show. So, unless they made a prototype of a game, and Sony is like. That is the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen. We need to lock you down ASAP. Why? Jade Raymond hasn't done shit. She went to, I mean, she did, a, she was a producer on like Assassin's Creed 2 and stuff. And that's awesome. Those games are great. But like, since then, every project she's been a part of, she never finished. So now she started, she's the, the head of this, you know, Haven Studios. And it's like, okay. That's cool. You know, like I, I'm excited to see what you have to show, but we don't know anything about it. It's been less than a year. Everything you've done prior to this, you never finished. So why, why are we buying you? Well, and yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, like I said, Sony most likely has a lot more information than we do obviously on this. But my understanding is that like that studio is comprised mostly of X devs from Stadia as well as uh, Ubisoft Montreal, which you know Ubisoft Montreal they've done some good games and and uh, Stadia, you know they they had a really good online infrastructure. So maybe Sony locked down Haven because they were like, hey, maybe they can help us with our excuse me, our online infrastructure or something. I don't know. Yeah. But like I saw this new, I, when I saw this news this past week, I was like, mm. what the fuck? Like they, they must've got this studio for so cheap. Otherwise, like I don't understand. Yeah. The, they didn't the even point. announce what they bought it for the purchase price. I, I like, again, I, I don't know enough. I mean, we've been doing this podcast for 215 episodes. We get a pretty good idea. We comb different news sites. We listen to other podcasts. Like we get a pretty good idea of what's going on. But I would be lying to the listeners if I made it seem at all like I knew what the fuck Haven is about or what Jade Raymond's capable of. I've you know we've never met this person. We don't know. We we only see her pedigree, and there's nothing really outstanding there, right? So I mean, what the fuck? Like, why would they? I mean, like I think. If I had to, if I had to, I think Sony has missed out on better opportunities. So it's weird to me that they're pulling the plug on a studio that has no pedigree. A studio that hasn't shown, like, like Supermassive Games, I think would have been probably a pretty good pick for them. I, you know, I think there's some other games that we, that I say we, but the Sony uh, studios rather that that they could have maybe acquired at a pretty fair price you know that seem to have teeth that seem to have creative talent and seem to have their their ear to the ground that are doing interesting things now maybe not all the games have have, have been critical successes but they are clearly talented and i think supermassive is one of them i just don't understand why they haven't you know why haven over 
some of these other obvious options. It has to be, like you said, either because of price or because they have a clear vision for that studio and they know who's working there and they know what they're capable of and they just trust it. Or maybe the third option is, dude, I'm in the music business. There are plenty of people who are successful in the music business who flat out fucking suck just because they have the gift of gab and they can just talk. They they run a good game with their mouth, right? So, I mean, maybe the studio is saying all the right things and they look really appealing, but... Or maybe they're seeing all the so, right things so, they are. I don't know. So I will say that I, I've been reading a little bit more about it. And it does seem like, I mean, maybe they're just excited about what Haven's doing. Because, like, uh, like, so Herman Holst came out and said, um, basically, he said that. <coughs> Excuse me. The experience that the stu- the shared experience, work experience that the studio has had, like all the people that co- they came in to that studio or whatever, has allowed them to get a pretty fast start on whatever it is that they're making. And he, but Herman Holst came out and said, quote, we could have carried on in the capacity of being an external development partner, but what Haven has created is so exciting for us There is just a desire to deepen that relationship. We are very impressed. We have been very impressed with how Haven is coming together. It is just easier for us to invest in the team and game more deeply this way. It is a testament to the fact that we have been very impressed with the progress that Haven has made. They're actually exceeding a lot of plans, including in terms of time, which rarely happens in game game development. So let me, uh, game development, let me tell you. So we thought... Let's invest deeply and do this properly. So it seems like, according to that statement, that at least in terms of like what Herman Holst is saying, that Sony is really impressed with what they've been able to put together in the last year. And if that is true, then I am actually really excited because I would love to see a team that is just really agile and quick on their feet and can turn around AAA development mm-hmm. really quickly because you don't see that very much in this industry. Well, thanks for sharing that. It's interesting. I, I Who fucking knows? I mean... I think I think that that's fine, you know. I mean, if if Haven has somehow managed to capture lightning in a bottle here, um, then by all means, let's scoop it up, you know. I you know, I'm not faulting Sony for buying the studio. I just don't understand it. So I, I guess that maybe clarifies things a little bit as amb- ambiguously as possible, you know, without coming right out and saying what they're working on. Sure, cool. Let's talk about new games, Jake. Got some well, new- just real, yeah. real quick. Oh, you had some news points. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Just a couple just a couple of quick things. I forgot. So um, the team at Bloomberg have reported that apparently some inf- insider information has lead them led them to believe that Sony may reveal its Game Pass competitor, the codename Spartacus, as early as this coming week. So Possibly even by next podcast, we could know what Spartacus really is officially, which okay. is kind of exciting. Okay. Um, and the other thing, and this is you know relevant to a large portion of the world, maybe not so much to our audience, but uh, FIFA EA has officially. Well, I don't know if they. I don't know that's no necessarily officially, but it seems like they're going to they're going to release the FIFA title. They're going to change. They're officially going to change it to EA sports football club, which is interesting because then it, it like somebody else could grab up the FIFA title. Like, let's say, you know, uh, um, Konami's game, uh, uh, pro evolution soccer. They could call it fucking FIFA soccer and trick all kinds and, of people. and they could probably trick all kinds of people into, buying that game but uh i'm not surprised ea is doing this i think what i read is that that fifa the 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 organization not the game wanted ea to pay them something insane like 400 million dollars to be able to use renew that. the license yeah. to be able to use the fifa name just for their the title game. nothing else right <clears throat> and it's like the the FIFA organization in general is so fucking corrupt and disgusting that like I would not want to pay them four hundred million. I wouldn't want to pay them four hundred dollars, <laughs> let alone four hundred million. Yeah. So, um, 
I don't know. It's just, it's, it's like I said, it's not dire news for our audience, but it is kind of interesting. It is interesting. I don't know what to make of that. I mean, it'd be like, I, I always try to like harken back to like what that would mean in the music business. That would be like if, uh, I don't know if what's like a band that's really big right now. Like imagine dragons gave up their name and then I could re. But they were the same band. Yeah. yeah and uh, I could rebrand re- one of my land and call us Imagine Dragons and be like, yeah, I play in Imagine Dragons. We're looking for a show. Like, yeah, and just it's fucking play these huge venues and we wouldn't be them. It is weird because because the EA Sports soccer game has been called FIFA for literally 30 years. So the fact that they're all of a sudden no longer going to be FIFA soccer. I mean, that's that's pretty wild if you think about it. I mean, I don't I I don't think they need it. Yeah, they might have a year or two where they have decreased sales because some people get tricked. But the way the Internet works, information travels so fast that within the first year, people will have adjusted and they'll be back to playing EA Sports Football Club or whatever the fuck it's going to be called. Yeah. So but it is it is really bizarre, like you say. I don't know why I used Imagine Dragons. I should have said like Megadeth or Metallica or something. But I, <laughs> I was trying to think of like a band that everyone listening would have heard of. And uh, yeah. anyways, let's move forward. New games, Jake. March 22nd, which is come and gone. Shantae and the Seven Sisters on PS5, PS4. March 23rd, we got Richie's Nightmare. Shadow Point on PSVR. The Pizza Delivery Boy Who Saved the World, PS5, PS4. Thunder Kid, Hunt for the Robot Emperor, PS5, PS4, March 24th. Relayer, or Relayer, PS5, PS4. It's all about laying bricks, apparently. Um, and then the Ascent, PS5. I'm kidding about that. The Ascent, PS5, PS4. And then March 25th, Ghostwire Tokyo, which I hear is doing pretty well. Uh, Mid-70s, high-70s on Metacritic right now. And uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which was in your uh, field of vision, Jake. PS5, PS4. Mm-hmm. So... It's really all there is, everybody listening. We're at about a little little more than an hour. But please don't forget to write us. Let us know if we should slow down the intro as far as peel back on personal discussions. Like, for instance, maybe we didn't have to talk about the Foo Fighters drummer passing away or about the Alice Cooper concert or about the random YouTube comment we got, but that was kind of necessary. But anyways... Let us know if you like the banter at the beginning of the show. Shoot us a quick line. Tag us on Twitter. Write us at awesome at gmail.com. Let us know your opinion. We'll listen, but ultimately we're going to do what we want to do. But I don't know. I think that's that's all I've got today. It's Saturday. It's snowing. It's March. I can't wait. I'm still working on taxes, so i got to get back to that. Mr. Peters, do you have anything left that you would like to add for the listeners? I want it to be fucking summertime. Other than that, uh, there's a lot of good games to play this year. So I apologize that every fucking game that's coming out is like a 50 to 70 hour experience. And I can't just like play a bunch of games and talk about them on the podcast. But I really don't want to like split my time and then end up not enjoying a game like Horizon Zero Dawn, which comes out once every five years. So, or Horizon Forbidden West, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. So, um, I apologize that we're not covering more games. Right now, yeah. But uh, I do intend on playing mostly new games this year, with the exception of Mass Effect. As we've discussed in the past, Mass Effect 2, just because we want to do that series, which I think is going to be totally worthwhile. So, um, so if, if, if there is a game that, you know, you guys want us to check out, then feel free to kind of push that along, uh, and we'll try to get to it when we can, but just let you know that we're trying to play as much as we can. Um, it's just, this is not our full-time job. Just so. look at our fucking <laughs> faces. For me to play look at our faces. If they don't say enough, I don't know what else does. Yeah. We're tired. We're working full-time gigs. We're playing gigs and we're doing podcasts. We're writing. I'm recording albums. I have 40 plus hours in in Horizon, listeners. How many hours do you guys have? 
I've managed to squeak in 40 hours, which is pretty good considering my, my crazy schedule. So we are going to get through it. And as Jake was saying, I do apologize. I, w- I wish the horizon was a little more con- condensed. It's 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 a very large game. I, I kind of wanted it to be like a 40-hour game, but I, I realize I'm nowhere near the end. I'll say this. I don't wish it was smaller. I wish I had the ability to play more than one game at a time. Mm. If I could play Horizon and something else and something else, and we could talk about three or four different games at once, that would be awesome. But I just, I can't split my attention because as soon as I start playing something else at the same time, unless it's a completely different genre and I can bounce back and forth easily, one of them is going to get left in the dust. And I really don't want that to happen to Horizon. It would be a shame for that game to disappear. Mm-hmm. So, just saying. It's worthy of our attention. I'm glad we both we both ponied up and bought it. And I paid more for it than I needed to. But I think that, yeah, 100% I agree, man. I think we just need to get through this game, do our spoiler cast, and move on to the next, whatever that might be. I, I let the listeners know about Ghost Runner. I wanted to just try it because I had installed it. Like I said, it's way too fucking difficult for me. But in GTA 5, I'm dabbling in there when I don't have enough time to sit down. And, and If I can't devote an hour to playing games, I'm not playing. I'm not powering up Horizon. I'm just not going to do it because by the time I get into a side quest in, in, or a main mission or something, it, that game requires more than an hour of my time per play. It just does the way that a game is. Like you can't, you can't play that game because if you run into some random fucking machines, like those battles sometimes take ten minutes. So yeah. I mean, you need an hour of your schedule set aside to play Horizon and make any progress on it. So I just have to carve out the time. It's kind of hard to do, but yeah. Anyhow, if I'm not doing that, I'm doing GTA Five right now. That's just where where I'm at. But. We'll keep talking games, and thanks again to everybody for tuning in to episode 215. It's crazy how how many episodes we're getting logged here. If you guys want to see that crazy run of Ghost Runner that I did, I make it look incredibly easy, and uh, it took me 96 tries. So, anyways... <laughs> I was about ready to throw my fucking controller. The good thing is, real quick, with Ghost Runner, is when you die, it boots right the fuck back up. There's no, like, load. It's just You're just back to it. That's good. Yeah, so they do that right at least. But Jesus, I had no idea I died so many times. All right, I'm done talking. Thanks for tuning in to episode 215 of PS This Is Awesome. We'll be back next week to talk more PlayStation news and games with you. Maybe, maybe we'll have some news about the Spartacus. Maybe we'll have some more news about The Witcher. Maybe we'll have some more news about the VR2. Maybe we'll have more news about Ubisoft's showcase. Who knows what we're going to talk about so stay tuned have it on subscribe and we will see you next week so like wake up club the witcher and warhammer 40k space marines p.s p.s this is this is awesome awesome